Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Daniel, this is The World Explained, and today we're going to be talking about an extremely interesting element, at least I think. It's called Techneti... Techneti... Te technetium. Technetium. It's pronounced Technetium, apparently. Um, it actually comes to the Greek word Technetos, which means artificial, and that's already tell you a little bit about this element. In fact, I have a little coin made out of Technetium right here. Actually, I don't. This is just a nickel. Um, I wouldn't be able to hold Technetium. I mean, I could. But I wouldn't want to because it's highly radioactive and probably way too expensive for me to afford even that amount of. And as far as its placement on the periodic table goes, it's like completely out of left field. So if you look at the periodic table, right here we have the transition metals. Most of them are found naturally in Earth except the ones down here like Rutherfordium or Borium or Seaborgium. That is even weirder whenever you say it out loud. But up here, all these are found Maybe not abundantly the Earth's crust, but at least somewhat commonly. Uh, you know, you have your titanium, your iron, cobalt, even tungsten. But technetium, you can't really find it in Earth's crust anywhere. That's because it has an extremely short shelf life in its most stable form. And keep in mind, this isn't a stable element, it is highly radioactive. It's been theorized that some small amounts of technetium could exist in large deposits of uranium. But if they do, we probably wouldn't know about it, or be able to find it. This is because the most stable form of technetium only has a half-life of 36 hours. That means if you have a big bunch of technetium, half of it will deteriorate in a molybdenum after 36 hours. Yeah, that's this it's not very stable. In fact, this is so radioactive that they actually use it for chemotherapy. A metal for chemotherapy. A metal. Just let that sink in your head. Technetium's interesting as well because it's the first synthetically made element. It's the first one that we made in a lab because we couldn't find it anywhere. And because of this, technetium led the way for us to discover a lot of other elements such as all of these. So this bears the question, why is it so radioactive? None of the elements around it are. Well, I found two reasons. The first one went really deep into quantum physics. I don't, it's not something I'm going to go into. Quantum physics is just a headache. But there's another reason I found that's quite interesting that makes sense, but also doesn't at the same time. It's called the Matauk Isobar Rule, and it's so complicated, I don't want to screw it up, so I'm just going to read it right off my screen. If two adjacent elements on the periodic table have isotopes of the same mass number, one of the isotopes must be radioactive. Yeah, that's that sounds pretty complicated. If you take a look, technetium, molybdenum, and ruthenium actually do have isotopes with the same mass number. And because molybdenum and ruthenium aren't radioactive, that means just by the rule of exclusion, technetium has to be. So I'm not even entirely sure that there's a consensus within the scientific community. If there was, I wasn't able to find one. So I guess it's just kind of radioactive because it is. Yeah, those are the reasons I think technetium is like one of the most interesting elements there are. Anyways, my name is Daniel, this has been The World Explained, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye. And if you take a look, actually, technetium molybdenum, molyb, molybdenum, I cannot say molybdenum, 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 molybdenum.